Well, you know, Tom, we think we're going to set um, the all-time record for um, a UFC uh, tended event, which is just north of 55,000 from UFC 129 in Toronto back in 2011. So there's still some great tickets available, but um, we expect to, uh, to set some records on, on Sunday. And uh, what will people see there? What can they look forward to? Well, they're going to see um, world-class professional athletes like Kyle, you know, competing um, against um, equally well-trained and um, equally um, elite uh, global athletes in, in a really exciting, um, high-energy sport that um, is uh, a representation of the combat sports that you talked about. They're going to see for the first time ever in Australia two championship fights. Our women's um, bantamweight champion, uh, Ronda Rousey, is fighting Holly Holm. And our women's strawweight champion, uh, Joanna Janjacek, is going to fight uh, the Canadian uh, Valerie Letourneau. So, first time ever, two championships here. A Liberal MP here in the state parliament, Georgie Crozier, has said today and yesterday that children should not be allowed into UFC fights. I'll address this to both of you, but you first, Tom. What do you think? Well, I think um, that decision is is up to the parent, parents and and or guardians of those of those children, um, and um, that's the policy that uh, that we've always had. It's the policy of the uh, uh, the people that uh, run Etihad Stadium, and and we think that um, that's entirely appropriate that parents and guardians should make those decisions. Colin, like I don't know if you have uh, children yourself, but do you think children should come and watch you in the cage on Sunday? Uh, yeah, I think they should, you know. Um, yeah, again, it's up to the parents' decision, but, uh, you know, it's, we have to educate our kids that what we do is actually, it's a martial arts, you know. Like uh, people, like I said, people do boxing, people do kickboxing, people do jiu-jitsu, but when you combine them all together, people start getting funny about it, which is, for me, I don't understand. But, um, you know, it, it, it is a martial arts at the end of the day, and, and it, it just we just need, as parents, to educate the children about what it is. For how long have you been doing MMA? For how long have you been fighting? I've been doing mixed martial arts probably on 13 years now. I think I started in 2002 when I was 22 years old. I understand your background was playing rugby league up in Queensland. Did that help at all? Um, yeah, rugby league's a tough game, so I guess it helped a bit. Um, you know, touching on rugby league, I think I had more injuries and it was a lot more dangerous for me playing rugby than it is doing mixed martial arts. Why do you think so many people have this visceral anti-reaction when it comes to mixed martial arts or to cage fighting, as some people call it? Why, why are they so opposed to it? Um, you know, I just think maybe it's the cage aspect, but um, it, the cage is actually there for our safety. Mm. Um, I've, I've fought both in a ring and in a cage, and I've actually fallen out of the ring before while fighting, and that poses a lot more dangers to, to the fighter and even to the people in the crowd, where the cage is more of a safety aspect. It can hold a fighter inside the arena and, and help him to keep fighting. Do you get scared before you enter the ring or into the cage ahead of, ahead of a fight, <laughs> and you'll be doing that this Sunday? I get nervous a little bit, yes. Um, you know, I, I tell myself it's excitement as well, but um, obviously any sport that I've ever done in my life is always that nervous, you get nervous about it, so um, it's, it's, not, it's not a thing where it, it controls me, but um, yeah, obviously I get a bit nervous. What are the nerves based on? Are they based upon just hoping that you'll win or worried about being injured or a combination of the two? What goes through your mind? Um, never, never really about getting injured, just about performing to the best of my ability. You know, I want to go out there, I want to put on a great fight for everybody and, um, you know, go out there and... and do what I've been trying to do for the last eight weeks in the training camp and, and just I don't want to let my coaches down or my fans down so for me that's what all the nerves are about. Do, do you study your opponent? Do you try and work out weaknesses in their game and you know things that you should work on to try and win the fight? Absolutely you know I sit down with my coaches we all look at the footage we come up with a game plan try and work on that game plan every day leading up to the fight and um, you know it's what we do we watch as much footage as we can. We'll take calls in a moment 9690693131332 one of the things that, to me, apart from the physical cage itself, that seems to turn a lot of people off is the fact that the, uh, the punching, the action, can continue to go on when one or both fighters are on the ground. Do, do you think cage fighting or MMA should do that? Do you think you should be able to hit someone while your opponent's lying on their back? I do, you know. For me, it's, it's part of the sport. But at the point in the, in the fight, if the guy cannot intelligently defend himself, the ref's going to stop it, okay? So the ref's above him the whole time. And I think it's it's like in boxing, if the guy gets hurt or gets stunned or knocked down or something, the ref's going to give him a standing eight count. And that's in our sport, that doesn't happen, you know. So in boxing, the guy gets his wits back about him, gets back in there, goes again, may get knocked down again, it happens again and again. He's continuously getting his head trauma. But with our sport, if we get hit and we, and we look like we're at that stage where we might be knocked out or any of that, the, the ref's going to stop it because the guy's not, it's not good for the guy. It's, it's not intelligent. So How much does it hurt? 
Uh, surprisingly, it doesn't hurt that much. Um, you know, with all the adrenaline and all the training you've been doing, it, uh, it, it's not too bad when does you're it, in there. Does it hurt afterwards? It depends whether you win or lose. <laughs> <laughs> well said, Carl. Yeah, that is yeah. funny, that, isn't it? So it's amazing how much, how many hurts a, a win can overcome. Um, what are you hoping to get out of Sunday? I mean, uh, you know, you can have a career in something like MMA, and I've seen you on TV a number of times before. Is the goal to win some sort of a championship just to keep fighting? What do you want to get out of the sport? Uh, that's exactly my goal. You know, I do want to win the uh, welterweight championship. Um, I've been fighting for a long time, and, and you know, I think guess that's why every guy gets into the sport is to get in there and test themselves, and then after a while, you really want to work for something. So for me, it's it's definitely the championship. And uh, you yeah, know, coming from the camp I do and training with the guys I do at that level, uh, I know I'm at, I'm ready to to go to that next level. Do your parents watch you fight? They do. You know, my mum and dad both come along and watch, and I have three brothers. They all come as well. Um, they're my biggest supporters. They love it. My mom's always loved, uh, from, her, from her first fight, she's always watched every one of them, and she, and she likes them.